Hey guys, welcome to another Sunday chat. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope your week went well. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, I'm actually having a pretty good day today. I got some somewhat good news, which I it's not nothing I can talk about on the channel, but it was actually some good news. I mean, it may turn out, it may turn out, not turn out, but actually it's like an employment opportunity that would be real nice. So I'm actually in a good mood right now. Although I think I'm usually in a good mood when I do these. Although I try to, I try to stay even in my life. You know, I try to keep a balance. I don't let myself get too high or get too low. But what we are going to be talking about today is I've got some more Gen Con information for you because I, I kind of want to be the premier source for Gen Con news uh, leading up to the convention. Uh, just because I'm curious about it myself, so. I figure while I'm checking, I might as well let you know. Uh, a little general convention news. Uh, and then what I'm actually going to talk about, hopefully most of the chat, and not the Gen Con stuff, is uh, have you? do you ever just buy games just to own them? And that's kind of the thing that's been on my mind lately is how many games I buy just to own them and... You know, what is a good price to pay? How much are you willing to pay just to, quote, own a game? You know, what does it even mean to buy a game just to own it? You know, and then kind of some of the ones I do. And I'm not just talking about miniature games. I'm talking about board games, role-playing games. Uh, just do you ever just buy a game just to own it? And then we are also going to look at my new purchases, which you see on the desk. But let's get this start. Let's get this talk started. I got to refill my coffee cup and then we will be back. Okay, guys. So I've kind of got myself comfortable. I got my computer set up. So the first thing we're going to talk about is with regards to Gen Con. And I figured you guys were probably tired of hearing about who, who was not going to be there. So they put out their official exhibitor list. And I went through it with a fine tooth comb to try to see some names that I would recognize that are attending. Now the first thing you need to realize is the attendance is down by almost 150 exhibitors from 2019. Obviously they didn't do one in 2020. But in 2019 I think they said had they had a record of something like 530 attendees. So this year they are down to 350. So that's 350, 455, almost 180 less attendees. And that is a lot. Okay, if there was a difference of 30 or 40 attendees and they were big attendees, that would be news. You know, if 30 or 40 big attendees pulled out, that would be news. But when the number of attendees is down by almost 200, I don't care whether they're big or not, that is a lot of empty space on the floor now they did say that they have over 80 new exhibitors which I mean that's kind of a non-announcement obviously if other people aren't coming then you're gonna offer that space to people you know who've never been there so to say you have 80 new attendees is kind of silly when you've had a hundred and eighty less you still have a hundred and eighty less exhibitors than you had in 2019 and the interesting thing is so with those 80 that are new, that would actually mean 180 plus 80, that would almost mean 250 attendees backed out, right? Probably maybe 260 backed out of doing Gen Con this year. Because if they had not replaced them with, quote, new attendees or new exhibitors, I keep calling them attendees, but new exhibitors, then they would have had over 250. And I guarantee you they were cutting prices for some of those so-called new ones because you'd have to. I mean, half of them probably have not, uh, are not prepared, don't have the stock or the inventory. So they're just probably going just to be there. And I will say, looking through this list, some of these companies, I don't know if they're actually gonna be there. So out of some of the 350 that are announced, there's kind of conflicting information on whether they're actually going to be there or not. And then as I heard another, uh, Another YouTube channel that I watch was saying some of these people may be there, but they might not have any product because apparently there's some kind of container shortage going on right now in the industry. 
And by containers, I mean, you know, those big, uh, big shipping containers. And there's some kind of shortage so that a lot of these uh, manufacturers have no product. So you may have people show up that have no product. They just stand there with some leaflets smiling at you. Uh, and one of them on here, I think I know they're going to be doing that because I saw the guy's website that, that owns the company. And that's what he said, that they weren't bringing any product or staff or volunteers, but they were going to just kind of be roving around the con, whatever that means. Now, the first thing I will say is I have no new information on like their health and safety things. I did find they kind of moved that other bulletin that I was talking to you about so that now if you go to their fact, their FAQ, and then you click on their health and safety stuff, you will find uh, the bulletin I was talking about. So if you want to read it for yourself and not take my word for it on the masking, the vaccinations, the timed entry, you can go read that blog by going to the FAQ and then clicking on the link in the FAQ. So let's get into the companies that I know of that are going to be there. Now, you may know a lot more of these companies. I mean, you can get the exhibitor list off their website, but I'm just going by the ones I know of. So there are companies on here maybe that you know of that are, are significant to you that would not be significant to me. Now, even though I know of some of these companies, I'm not saying that they're booths I would visit. I don't, I'm not even saying I buy their stuff. I'm just simply saying I know who they are. Uh, so as we get into this, and I was just thinking of something else that I just did not, I just, I just kind of occurred to me. I did not see their name up there. So give me a second because that is, that's going to be huge. Uh, that will be huge if, if I have to double check that, but we will see. So, uh, now, I guess maybe I should tell you guys who are supposed to be the sponsors of Gen Con this year, which is kind of funny because <laughs> normally the sponsors have the biggest floor space, right? Or the sponsors are like, get all get extra promo. Or so. Actually, I don't know what they get. But normally the sponsors, you know, they make a big deal. This is, this is who's sponsoring Gen Con this year. And this year's sponsors are, let's see here. So I'm at their website. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't know. They don't even have their sponsors listed at the website. I think I'm going to have to go back to my email. That's kind of funny. You sponsor them, and they don't even bother to put you on the website. You must, That must have been a discounted sponsorship. You get no space. No space in our media. You know, you have to you have to let people know yourself that you're a sponsor. All right, one second, guys. So, uh, I know one of the sponsors is like Artel Sorian Games, who does. Uh, I think they do Shadowrun. I'm not sure if they do Cyberpunk. Uh, Cyberpunk 2020 or whatever that's called, Cyberpunk 27. But I think they do do Shadowrun. And uh, some other stuff. So, let's see here. Who are they saying is their sponsors? Uh, let's see here. Wow, I don't even see here. I don't even see the names on this one. Let me click on this. Oh, here we go. So here's their sponsors, Check Games, which I, okay, I don't really know what Check Games does. I've heard of Check Games. I'm not going to deny that. Let's see what Check Games makes. Let's go to Check Games where it's a code names. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like some kind of party game. Code names. So Check Games is a sponsor, Artel Sorian, eBay. Huh. eBay doesn't even sell anything. I think that's the biggest joke in the world. What kind of booth is eBay going to have? eBay sells absolutely nothing. eBay is a web portal. They sell nothing. But somehow eBay is going to be there. I mean, what are they going to have? A bunch of Levi jeans and uh, Dockers shirts and shoes in there? I don't have the slightest idea why eBay is at Gen Con. Forbidden Games, which I, I don't know who is Forbidden Games. Like, they're talking about all the new exhibitors. What about all these new sponsors that ain't nobody ever heard of? Because I'm looking these people up to see what they what they sell. 
Uh, and if it's anything I know of, Mosaic. So I've heard of Mosaic. Uh, Raccoon Tycoon. I kind of heard of them. That's kind of funny. Uh, let's see who else. Weird. Now, is that the same as Weird Miniatures? W-Y-D. I don't know if that's the same as Weird Miniatures or Weird Games. Let's see. So, Weird. Okay, I thought they were called Weird Men. They do Malifaux. So, they're one of the sponsors. Like, yeah, I can see Weird. Catalyst. And now, this is not the same as Catalyst Games Lab. I know a lot of people, I think last time when I talked about Catalyst, they mentioned, oh, Catalyst does something. But actually, they were talking about Catalyst Games Lab. So Catalyst Games Lab actually publishes Shadowrun. Uh, at least that's what they have here. Maybe they sell it. But uh, Catalyst is not Catalyst Games Lab. So I just wanted to clarify that if somebody was saying, oh, I heard, you know, the Shadowrun people are going to be there. No, they're not. That's not them. Uh, although I think Catalyst Games Lab is going to be there. So if you heard that, you heard correct. All right, Altasaurian Games does uh, The Witcher and Cyberpunk Red. And okay, cyberpunk, cyberpunk, red or light. Yeah, so I would, I would actually be interested in hearing more about cyberpunk red and what they're bringing out from our Talsorian. Uh, the other sponsors are Funko, which I've everybody's seen enough of Funko, but they actually do have some board games. Like I think they had a superhero Funko game last time I was there. Game Trade Magazine. Now that's ridiculous because all they do is show out and hand out their, 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 a free issue of their latest monthly trade magazine. That just tells you stuff that's coming out. But I mean, what kind of booth is that? Ravensburger, I've heard of them, and then Slugfest. So that is their so called sponsors. Be honest with you, that is pretty light and pretty pathetic for a convention as big as Gen Con. That would be like if Comic Con said. You know, we are being sponsored by, you know, I don't know. If, if we're being sponsored by Archie Comics or something. Or we're being sponsored by, you know, some obscure little channels and stuff. I mean, for Gen Con, there's not one big name miniature game maker on here. Right? Maybe a medium. I might, Ravensburger is probably medium to large. I mean, they... They've been around a long time, but they're not exactly entrenched in the miniature role-playing community, especially not the role-playing community, you know. So, that is the sponsors. Now, like I said, I'm going to go through the list of people who will be there that I'm familiar with. So, first up, we have AEG, and I don't really know what AEG is doing these days. They used to do the... Uh, Legend of the Five Rings, Clan Wars game, which I loved. And then they just kind of trashed it. Uh, Archon Studio. These are the guys I did a video on my weekly Wargaming News who I said are making the... Uh, I think it's called Battles in Eternity, a He-Man game. So I would love to go there and pick up a copy of that He-Man on Battle Cat, but I can probably get it quicker through the mail. <laughs> Ares Games. I think they do Sword and Sorcery. All right, so then we go down through the A's. That's all I saw that I knew from the A's. We go down to the B's. Now, there's a few here I've heard of, but I, I couldn't tell you what they do. Like, uh, I think Badger Games, Atlas Games, Bayzier Games. Uh, then we keep going down. Broken A Games, CNC Games. All right, so those are ones... You know, I think I've heard of them. Catalyst Game Labs. Again, that is the one I think they do. Shadowrun. Cephalair Games. They are Frosthaven, Gloomhaven. Casium. Everybody knows Casium. Chessex Manufacturing. 
I think Casium used to do Battletech. I don't know if they still had that license or not. Chessex Manufacturing, that's the dice people. Uh, Conquest by Parabellum War Games. That's that, that big old fat chunky miniature game where you play with the miniature pieces that look like they're about the size of chess pieces. You know, they're always on uh, on tabletop or Beast of War trying to sell that junk. I don't know why people do that. Why would you make a miniature game with pieces that are like 54 millimeters tall? I mean, that's just, I don't, I don't know. I guess people play it because they've been around a couple of years now, but I will not play that. I refuse to. I do not want tables and tables full of big chunky miniatures because it's hard enough as it is to put a table together for 28 millimeter. So why would I want to be walking around with 45 millimeter figures trying to do some scenery and games and scale? I don't know who told them that was a good idea. I think that was purely, purely for manufacturing purposes. They wanted to probably get more detail. And I guess somebody told them, well, at this scale, we can't. But if you make it 40, 45 millimeter, you know, we can, we can give you more detail. And that's what they did. You have Cool Stuff Inc., which is just a, a, a retailer. They're usually there. They usually have a lot of board games. Some of them discounted. So I usually like to go to their booth because sometimes you can grab some older games that are now discounted. Uh, and they'll just have tons of them. Crystal Cast, they are a dice company. I think they do dice, but I've heard of Crystal Cast. Uh, who else is going to be there? Devier Games, I've heard of them. I don't know what they make. DGS Games, they do free blades. I usually like to go there because sometimes they will put out new miniatures that I, I am not aware of. So I will go and look in their little... Uh, they have like one of the old school glass displays, you know. How they used to do conventions where they buy a little acrylic or glass display and put all their painted miniatures and you pick say well I want number four number three and uh can I can I get eight <coughs> and then the guy goes in the back and pulls them out in their little uh their little baggies so DGS games is going to be there although I know they've been trying to do a role playing game which I don't know why so maybe they might be tied up with that all right, then we go down from the D's. Dwarven Forge will be there with all that expensive dungeon stuff. So I mean, that's <clears throat> that is what it is. I like to look at their booth. I don't. I don't ever buy them. One day, I think I asked a, a young lady how much was like a corner section. I mean, it was just a little corner section, and I don't know. I think it was like sewers or something. But I'm like, you know, how much is this corner section? It couldn't have had more than <laughs> it couldn't have been more than 15 pieces. I think that girl said $85. I'm like, oh my God. All right? Oh my Lord. You know, so I don't I don't buy stuff from Dwarven Forge. I'm at, I don't know if I've ever bought anything from Dwarven Forge. Them and uh what's that miniature building authority? Like I, I I used to I've always watched them for years and I've never bought anything from them. Alright, so then we have Dwarven Forge, eBay's going to be there. And now let me say this because if you don't if you don't do Gen Con a lot, you might not kind of notice this. But when they say exhibitors, so if, if if Gen Con says there's going to be quote 350 exhibitors, not all of those exhibitors carry games and miniatures or even role playing stuff, right? A lot of those exhibitors, and this has been taking over more and more lately. A lot of those exhibitors carry, I won't say accessories, but I will say they carry uh, cosplay, kind of cosplay and collectibles. So you have a lot of anime people there, which I saw them, but I didn't name any of them. You have people selling candles. You have people selling costumes. You have people selling hats and fezzes. You have people selling uh, T-shirts. So, and I mean, you know, if you're into that stuff, that's great. You know, you can get it. It's like a little marketplace. But between me and you, I don't go to Gen Con to buy a Fez, right? Because if you want to buy a Fez or you want to buy a cool wand or you want to buy some Elven boots, go to your Renaissance Festival, Right, would everybody? I think most states they they go through most of the states in the U.S. Anyway, you go to a Renaissance festival and they have those marketplaces, 
right? And if you get probably the same people, I'm sure, you know, if they can afford to go to Gen Con. But that's kind of like what I expect to get at a Renaissance Festival. I'm going to buy me a little wooden sword. I'm going to buy me a, a knight's, you know, some greaves or some uh, whatever, bracers or whatever. You know, just because you just want it for the heck of it. But, I mean, to walk around Gen Con for four days picking up candles and fezzes <laughs> and, you know, uh, pipes... I don't know. I, that's a lot of money to pay to pick up that. And that stuff is expensive, too. Like you go there and you see a wooden pipe and you turn it over and it's, you know, $85, $100. I'm, oh, you know, that might be all you had to spend for the, the weekend. So anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Who else is going to be there that we know of or we might know of? Flying Frog Productions. I think they do Shadows Over Brimstone. They usually have a nice booth. Uh, Free League Publishing, they did uh, Tales from the Loop. They are doing, uh, yeah, what's that other game that they're known for? <clears throat> Which I don't have in front of me, but I think most of you guys know who Free League Publishing is. Uh, who else do we have? Gale Force 9. So to me, that's probably like one of the first ones that I named that I would really be interested in. Because I know they have like the Star Trek stuff. And uh, they have, sometimes they have like the D&D &D, uh, premium miniature line or whatever it used to be called. But they usually have a good booth. Alright, let's keep going. We're in the G's. Game Shyans. So this is the guy that he makes his own dice. I think if you've been to Gen Con, you know how he is. A very small booth. Uh, let's keep going. So like a lot of this I'm looking at, this all looks like... This all looks like uh, accessory people. People selling cosplay stuff and geek stuff. Uh, Green Ronin Publishing, that's a role-playing. Greenbrier Games, role-playing. Uh... Let's see. Let's see anybody else that I know of? IDW Games. I definitely am familiar with them, but let me let me look them up to see what's the latest thing they have out. So I don't think I've bought anything from IDW Games in a while, or maybe I have. So they have some kind of Ghostbusters game out now. Munchkin, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Men in Black. So they're mostly just board games. I don't know. For some reason, I thought they had some miniature games. Maybe they do. But So IDW Games. Impact Miniatures. I'm familiar with them. Uh, Iron Crown Enterprises. They're old school. That's old school Gen Con right there. Iron Wind Metals. Kinzer and Company. Yeah, they do a role-playing game. Now, here it says Kingdom Death. But I read somewhere last week that Kingdom Death wasn't coming. So I don't know if they've changed their mind or if they have not updated this list. Like, this list was released uh, prior to them announcing that now they're not coming. And they did say when they released this that it was subject to change. So... Meaning, which to me, I think, means that they're subject to take people off. Because I don't really see how you would add somebody at this late stage that's going to jump in and say, oh, we're going to be there if you've already assigned floor space. You know, and people ostensibly have paid for it or put a deposit down on it. Uh, Mantic Entertainment is coming. Which I don't recall. I don't know what Mantic usually brings to Gen Con. I've seen them there. I don't really spend a lot of time at their booth. They usually bring like Star Saga and Dungeon Saga and Warpath and all of that stuff. So they, they have an okay booth. Mattel. Now that is a new one. I don't recall seeing Mattel before. Uh, so I would like to see their booth actually. I remember one year. Who was that that came? It wasn't Mattel. Was it Pokemon? I think it was like the Pokemon store came, which I don't see them here, but Mattel is coming. So I think that's kind of interesting what Mattel is going to be showing off. I think they probably are trying. Now, funny thing, Hasbro's not coming. 
Which means, of course, Wizards of the Coast is not coming either. Although, I mean, you could usually have Wizards of the Coast, but without Hasbro. All right, Miniature Building Authority will be there. Uh, so if you want to do that, Monty Cook Games, I've heard of them. Although, I don't remember what they, that's mostly role-playing. Uh, Mythic Games, that they're just going to be showing off their Kickstarters. Old and new. Although, I guess if you're looking for, like, I don't know, like Wright Busters, I don't really know. I remember Mythic Games last year. They had a decent booth. That's They were really doing the Joan of Arc Destinies all last year. But I think they do bring product now. They do bring stuff. So if you missed out on some of their Kickstarters, you might can get the retail versions. Uh, but these are not the pledge, you know, the stretch code stuff. Uh, who else? Pandasaurus Games. I've heard of them. They're coming. And who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Plaid Hat Games, I've heard of them. Uh, Porto Games. Now, I Porto Games is the guy I told you about that I saw a, a video log of him saying they weren't coming. At least they weren't going to have a present. So, I don't know if this means they've changed their mind because I saw that about two weeks ago. Or whether it means that they're going to keep their space, but they're actually not bringing any product. Which is kind of what I got from him. Now it says PC, PSC Games. And I'm assuming that's Plastic Soldier Company. PSC Games. Because they used to be called Plastic Soldier Company. Yeah, that's them. They changed their name, I guess, to PSC Games. Uh, which I guess now Plastic Soldier Company is part of them. Which is kind of odd. Let's see what they're offering these days. Uh, let's see, let's see. Mortem et Glorium. So that's what their newest thing is, the Mortem et Glorium stuff from Plastic Soldier Company. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. Let's see. So, who else, who else? Let's wrap this up. Uh, Renegade Game Studios. I don't. I don't know. For some reason, that sounds familiar. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Slugfest Games. And Steve Jackson Games. And Stronghold Games. I think I've heard of them. Succubus Publishing. I think I've heard of them. I couldn't tell you what they make or sell. Uh, let's see who else. And the rest of these uh, do not ring a bell. Last and least is trollandtoad.com. You know, Troll and Toad is the big uh, hero collects people. They, they buy and sell the hero collects throughout the convention, which is okay. I mean, they don't pay you nothing. You know, you get pennies on the dollar. You give them about 40 hero clicks and they might give you, you know, 80 cents. Uh, Victory Point Games. Warhammer. Now, this is funny. It doesn't say Warhammer 40K. It doesn't say Game Workshop. It doesn't say Age of Sigmar. It says Warhammer is going to be there. I have no idea what that means. Now, if it is the same Warhammer that was at uh, Forge War, I mean, not Forge War, Origins in 2019, then they're pretty much just going to be selling, like, the, uh, kind of the resin. Last time, I think they were selling mostly Lord of the Rings stuff. Like, they had some Lord of the Rings boxes that they were selling or sets, the resin stuff. Because, I mean, obviously, they have no Warhammer products anymore, but... I don't know. Uh, so if you go there, please stop by their booth and tell me what was Warhammer doing there. Now, maybe that means Warhammer and Warhammer 40K all under the Warhammer banner. I don't know. But it says Warhammer will be there. WizKids will be there. And Weird Games will be there. Well, no, that's different because Weird, I saw Weird. Didn't I see Weird? Oh, they were a sponsor, but it's Weird Games. Okay. So, let me know what you think in the comments. 
uh, if there was anybody in there that's kind of got you to change your mind, uh, as in you were thinking of not going, but now you are, or if there was a notable absence and you're now thinking of not going, even though before you were. Now, I will tell you the names that struck out to me that are not listed. And again, you know, I already told you some of these, but I'm just trying to keep a running list. Simon, Asmodi, Fantasy Flight, Paizo, Wizards of the Coast, Foreground, which I like Foreground. I mean, I know they've got a lot of heat from that messed up Kickstarter they did. But I usually used to love to come when they made it overseas to buy some terrain from them, which I always bought. I'd say maybe a hundred dollars worth of terrain from them every convention, which is like not a lot of money when you're buying from foreground. Warlord Games is not going to be there, even though Mantic Games is. Although I don't know if Warlord Games has been to a Gen Con ever, or at least not in a long while. Although I think they go to Adepticon, which I don't understand that. But uh, Reaper Miniatures is not going to be there. But Reaper Miniatures will be doing their own convention, ReaperCon, in uh, Texas. So, I imagine they, they're they still also fulfilling their Kickstarter. It was a Bones 5. So, they're going to probably be up to their head between now and September getting that done. Which means they have no time to prepare for a convention. Osprey Games is not going to be there. Or Osprey Publishing. And Osprey has done Gen Con before. Uh... They have done, I think the last Gen Con, they had something called Escape from Coditz that they were showing off. But they're not going to be there. And Mayfair Games, that was the one. That was the one I double-checked right after we went live. Because I'm like, wait a minute, I don't remember seeing Mayfair Games. And Mayfair Games has been a perennial sponsor of Gen Con. So for Mayfair Games not to beat, I mean, they had their own hall. They literally had the Mayfair Games hall. Where you would play Mayfair Games all night long. You buy ticket to Mayfair Game events. Mayfair Games is not at Gen Con this year. Matter of fact, what I'd like to do, and I, I'm, I'm about to move on from this, guys, because I know some of you might not be interested, but I mean, this stuff interests me. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why it's called Sunday Chat. But if I type in Gen Con 2019 sponsors, all right, let's see who, let's see who the sponsors were in Gen Con, Gen Con 2019. Uh, let's see, let's see. Because I'm curious who might have fallen off. Uh, let's see, press releases. I should be able to find this. They usually list their sponsors pretty early. Uh... Gen Con 2019 signs three-year co says in now in January they signed a three-year co-partnership with Fantasy Flight Games. What was that? 19, 20, 21, 22. Seem like they should still have this so-called co-partnership, but Fantasy Flight is not going to be there. Pop-up convention, Monty Cook, Guest of Honor. TV streaming, merchandise, Make-A-Wish, record-breaking number of exhibitors. All of this is from 2019. But I do not, I'm trying to figure out who was their sponsor. Because I know Mayfair Games has been a perennial sponsor of Gen Con. Okay, let's see here. Ah. Uh. Record number of sponsors and media partners. Okay, so this this is who were sponsors in 2019. Now compare this to this year, and this will tell you how far it has fallen since the pandemic. So this year features the following sponsors. Now this was 2019: Fantasy Flight Games, Paizo, Rio Grande Games, which I don't know if Rio Grande Games is going to be there. Check Games. Pokemon. I told you Pokemon was there. Magic the Gathering. I didn't know Magic the Gathering is not there. Forbidden Games. They're back. Greater Than Games. 
I don't know who they are. Bushi Road, Table of Ultimate Gaming, Renegade Game Studios, Pandasaurus Games, Square Enix, Cool Stuff Inc., Breaking Games, Funko Games, Goliath Spin Master Games, Mattel Games. So I guess Mattel has been there before. Weird, Catan Studio. I don't know if I saw anything saying Catan was coming. Trolling Toad, Upper Deck. Upper Deck is not on there. Steamforge Games. I did not see Steamforge Games. Artalsori and their back. Slugfest, Bicycle Games, Eldritch Foundry, The Broken Token, Ravensburger, Game Trade Media, Pegasus Spiel, Borderlands, Tiny Tina's Robot Party, University Games, Wormwood Serenscape, The Op, Hero Forge. I did not see Hero Forge coming. I did not see The Op. Catalyst Game Labs. They're coming, but they're not a sponsor. Ultra Pro, Hotbox, Pizza, Sun King Brewery. Now, none of them I see listed as sponsors this year. And those are local guys. Hotbox and Sun King Brewery. Why wouldn't they have jumped on the sponsorship? Panda Game Manufacturing, Gate 10 Events and Parking. They're, none of them are sponsors. Brother. I don't know who that is. Games and Gears, Quills Coffee, Ship Naked, Chaldea Burger Study, Lyft. <laughs> Lyft as in the car service. Wild Bill Soda Pop and D&D Beyond. I did not see any of them in 2021. And a few of these I had forgot about. So, Pokemon is not going to be there. Magic the Gathering is not going to be there. I did not see Real Grand Games is not going to be there. Uh, who was the other one that I remembered they said here? Uh, Catan Studio is not going to be there. So, these are all the 2019 sponsors compared to this year. I don't even think a third of these came back. I think this year, I, I read them off, I think they have 12 sponsors. This this 2019 looks like they might have had something like 36. And I mean big boys. Big boys and girls were sponsoring it. So that is, that is the update I have for you guys on Gen Con in this chat. All right, guys, so now we're going to take a quick look at stuff I've gotten in this week. Or at least stuff I think I got in this week. I might have got it in sooner, but wasn't able to show it until this week. So, obviously, the thing that's looking you right in the face is this Quinjet. This is actually from uh, HeroClix. And I've been trying to get one of these, but I wanted to get it at the right price. So, uh... I was able to snag this recently, and this will be making an appearance in some games. This is actually nice, too. This is a nice model. I didn't pay that much for it. In addition, I also picked up this little shield flying car. This is pretty cool to be buzzing around some five parsecs from home terrain or, you know, frost grave if that's what you're doing. This is a... I think this is like a Halo Mega Box drop pod. And so I really wanted some kind of drop pod, especially for some bug hunt games. This one is missing the uh, cover, so I got a good deal on it. Because uh, normally, if you try to buy these kind of Mega Box drop pods, I've seen people asking for like $29 for this thing. And so I only paid 5 for this one because it is it is missing the front door but I don't need that because you can just start the game with the you know the pod open and the, the person you're there to retrieve already out I think this might be great for some bug hunt games having to rescue somebody or maybe bringing in help from a drop pod this is from a Kickstarter I backed by a company called Stonehaven Miniatures I had forgot all about this until they sent me something saying to pay the postage and I paid it, and I was like, I don't even remember what I ordered. But this is a nice figure. So I wanted to show you guys this now from Stonehaven. I think it is an elf. I think it's like an... Maybe he's not an elf, because he does not have... I don't 
think he has elf ears. Let me take off my glasses. No, he doesn't have elf ears. This is a... Does it say on the thing? No, it just says Stonehaven Miniatures. But I really like this figure. So if you are looking... You know, if you like it too, I mean, check out Stonehaven Miniatures. I'm going to go back and see what else they did as part of this Kickstarter that they are fulfilling. And maybe I can pick some of that up. Now, I was I have been trying to get a copy of this thing probably since it first came out. And I just really didn't want to pay for it. Uh, I think it retails for like $40, which is pretty much what I paid for it. But, you know, it, it got kind of high for a while there uh, when it was harder to find. And I am going to be doing an official unboxing of this thing. The Firefly Serenity. I have to find a way to work into my narrative how, 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 how my character Jake goes from the Bethesda to the Firefly. And that brings us to this. Yes. If Jake has the Firefly, <laughs> Charles Mandrake is getting a Pelican. The UNSC Pelican. Now, I have seen some videos on this. And it looks good when you put it together. I, I hope it's to scale. Although I'm not going to be too upset if not. I mean, this is one of these vessels. You can either use it as a big drop ship or deployment ship if it's too big and if it's too small you can just use it as a personal craft so it's just the design of this is just perfect and this i can tell has been weathered so they've weathered in here and they kind of when i say weathered i mean they simply put some kind of wash on it which i saw somebody online do so i am thinking of doing that i will probably use some uh, metal on the grates I don't know if I'm going to do the chipping effects or not, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It says it has sounds and light, which I do not know what those would be, but heck, okay. Because I could use that in some games uh, of five parsecs from home or bug hunt. I tell you, man, I love bug hunt because you do get a, a, a pickup ship. And it is allowed to fire. And I mean, that, that opens up a lot of possibilities. And the way Bug Hunt is set up with you're overwhelmed, it doesn't break the game when you bring in this, this retrieval ship and let it let loose and hopefully get out. They do sell this a Warthog, but this is not to scale, at least not for miniatures. I think this is, this is pretty big. I think this is closer to like a... G.I. Joe scale or something or maybe even bigger. I think the figures are like six inches or something. So I will be doing an unboxing of this. We will be taking a look at it. It is a snap together kit. So I'm not sure if I'm going to show putting it together, but it looks like the wings rotate, which is kind of cool. And then last but not least for this week, I picked up the copy of the old Terminator Genesis the Miniatures game. This was a fairly unheralded game put out by, uh, it says River Horse here. But for some reason I thought this was Mantic, but maybe I get them confused. But it says it was put out by River Horse. Now, I think this line was actually bigger than this or was supposed to be bigger than this. Because... I seem to remember some displays like when they were advertising this with vehicles and stuff like that, which I have not seen come out, or at least I, I, I have not seen where I can get them. It says they were done this with Warlord games, so maybe that's who I was thinking, not Mantic. But uh, they were discounting this for a long time. I did not get this one, this game on discount to get the whole game. You know, I think that paid like $40 for this. But uh, they were discounting this for a long time at uh, Warlord Games or River Horse, uh, at least with regards to the sprues in here. And this is all you really get. It's not a lot in here. You get, I think you get the map, the tokens, uh, resistance, and then terminators. And that is a lot of terminators. I mean, in the real world, that this is just totally unbalanced. 
that many Terminators against 16 Resistance guys. 10 Terminators. I mean, pretty much you could play a game with two Terminators against all of them. And I did. So if you ever check out my Terminator game, I did not play these rules. I made up my own rules. But, uh, yeah, in my game, I think I had two, maybe two and a half Terminators that took on something like 16 resistance and a, a jeep like a, a a jeep with a heavy mg on it and uh i think that did the terminators win at the end or did the resistance i know whatever it was it came down to the last turn i'm gonna play some more of those games i just got to dig out where i put my rules at or watch this sh watch this play through and write them back down again so i'm not gonna unbox this now but i wanted to look through the catalog because I thought they would like show other stuff. Like I don't see where they made a hunter killer, which is what these these vehicles were called. Because I've been trying to find a hunter killer. That's what I really want to get. The helicopters you can you can model those, which the resistance uses. But you would think they'd have some kind of uh, flyer or something in here for the rest of their stuff. Oh, well, let's see here. Let's see. So they have a Warlord Games brochure, which that is not Terminator. That's not Terminator. Uh, that's not Terminator. That's not Terminator. And that's not Terminator. Let's see. Nothing Terminator in here. But I will, I will unbox this a little more and give you my opinion and my take on that. That's pretty much all the stuff I got in. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's a lot, if it's too much, if it's just enough. But I am really kind of trying to play catch up when it comes to sci-fi stuff. So I've come to realize I have very little sci-fi stuff. And that's odd because I actually like sci-fi. But uh, for a long time, other than playing 40K, there weren't a lot of... Uh, how can I put it? There weren't a lot of vers versatility in the genre, right? You know, a lot of companies would put out their sci-fi game, but, you know, if it wasn't your flavor of game or you didn't like their games, you were kind of left in the lurch. There wasn't a lot of versatility, which I think we're starting to see now with Stargrave, Five Parsecs from Home, Rogue Stars, Zona Alpha, uh... Hopefully counter blast like I would really like to see the counter blast material become more widely available that little bitty rule book man Every time I try to look in there. I just uh, I Don't know. I haven't made very much progress. Plus. I think you need some cards Which that is also a big hindrance to getting involved with it and the price So but there is a lot of options out here now And so I mean, you know, I'm gonna help you guys out as much as I can All right, guys, so for the last part of this uh, Sunday chat, I wanted to talk about games that you own or purchase or are looking to purchase simply to own them. And when I say that, you know, obviously to me a good example is this game, Talisman, that I have in front of you, and in particular this version. You know, there's several different versions of Talisman now. Fantasy Flight, I think, did some. And maybe even some other companies did some. I, don't, I couldn't even tell you which one is out now. I mean, they've had Batman Talisman and uh, Kingdom Hearts Talisman and other stuff. But this is the one that, like, I decided to buy, quote, just to own it. Like, I don't know if I'll ever play this. Uh... But I wanted to own it, right? And so my question is, do you do that? Is Am I the only one? Or are there other guys or collectors, gals, whatever, uh, who buy a game just to own it? Meaning, you know you're probably not going to play it. It may not even be a genre that you collect. You may not like the mechanics. Heck, you may not even like the company that, that made it or produces it. But you just want to own the game, right? You just want a copy in your collection, right? And if so, what, what type of games would that be for you? Now, for me, as I thought about it, 
Uh, some of the games off the top of my head is obviously this game, Talisman. There is a game called Game Busters, which is a role-playing game, but and I don't I don't role play a lot unless it's kind of solo. Uh, there was a game called Dawn Patrol, a game called uh, Boot Hill, and so when I mention these types of games, these are games that I would specifically collect just to own a copy. Right, I already know I'm probably not gonna play them. You know, I will maybe browse through them or look at them, but really, I I'm, I just want the game to own a copy. And to, that brings me to the question, and okay, so if I'm going to buy a game just to own a copy, to, to, so it will grace my shelf, how much is okay to pay for it? Now, I'm single, okay? So my threshold is now higher than it was when I was married and when I was raising my kids, right? So that's why I'm kind of just getting around to some of these games. Because, for example, I paid about $100 for this game with the shipping and the cost involved. And that's a lot of money for a game that probably will just sit on your shelf most of the time. But I think that's kind of... That's kind of close to my limit, even being single. is about $100 if it's something that really has some nostalgic value. Plus, if it's something that's going to hold its value. So, like, I would not pay $100 for a copy of Gangbusters unopened simply because I'd rather just buy an open copy for 20 bucks. Now, I don't know whether an unopened copy is worth 100 or not, but if I'm buying it, uh, you know, I probably will want to open it at some point. So... <laughs> I'm not paying $100 just to sit it on my shelf. Even with this game. I mean, if this was unopened, it probably would have been twice as much as what I paid for it. But, I mean, you know, I know you guys are dying for me to lift this up. Just to show you it's not just a box. <laughs> but it's in good shape. And it's open, but it's mostly unpunched. Right? So all of the cards and things are still in their original shrink. I mean, look at that art. Just that art brings back memories. I remember when they used to do art like that. Right? They weren't trying to do all this super realistic stuff. And they certainly weren't trying to do all this demonic stuff that they call art now. You know, it was... As soon as I say that, I pulled this <laughs> creepy looking grizzly bear. <laughs> okay, but that is about as scary as it got back in the day. But, you know, classic miniatures... Just classic stuff. Not all this gaudy stuff they, they do in these Kickstarters now where you get these miniatures that's got pieces on tops of the pieces and parts connected to the parts. But, you know, I thought $100 or so was probably about right for what I would pay for this game. I actually had two other chances to get the game and two other auctions and I kind of backed out right around a hundred bucks and I always felt bad because I felt like the other bidders had kind of you know they had kind of uh, bullied me out of the auction so this one I kind of found on a private channel and I was lucky to make an offer to a guy that was selling it uh, in an auction and I, I got it before the auction closed I mean if other people had showed up I don't know but, I mean, what would your limit be? If you're buying games like this, I mean, do you say, okay, $50? Do you say $200? I don't know. If it's just going to, if you just are buying the game to own it. Also, the other thing is, what does it mean to buy a game just to own it? So, in this case, you know, I could play this game. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh... Heck, I, I, I actually like this game. I think I've only played Talisman once all the way through. You know, but I like it. I like the, the way it played. It's kind of quick. I mean, it's not nothing challenging. Right? It's not nothing challenging. But, I mean, it's kind of a quick tabletop game. And, uh... But what does it mean if you say, well, I'm just buying it just to own it? Because if you say that, does that mean that, well... I'll pay more to get it in the shrink 
because I'm just buying it to own it, so I'm going to throw it on my shelf in the shrink. Because to me, now, that is a little weird, right? Even though I say I'm just buying this to own it, I would not probably buy it in the shrink and then literally take it out the package and put it on my shelf. Right, and then just sit there and stare at it across the room. Now, this boy has to get open. This mug has to get open, right? I mean, I need the tactile feel of the cards and the miniatures, and I need to at least be tempted to play it. Now, I have bought games that I, I leave in the shrink, but I'm not usually buying those games just to own them. I'm usually buying those games because they're valuable, I think they're going to go up in value and I'll either play them or I will sell them and make a profit so I can buy another game that I will play. And that is not what I'm talking about when I say buying a game just to own it. When I when you buy it, to me when you're buying a game just to own it, I am not there's no profit calculation in this. Right? I'm not thinking, "Oh, I paid 100, you know, if I hold on to this for 7 months, you know, I can sell it for 130 What difference does that make? Because then what I'm going to do, rebuy it? I mean, that doesn't make much sense to me. You know, and if I was going to do that, I would probably not pay 100 for it. I'd want to get it for less. And if I had, or else I'd pay more for the shrink. And then hope that one goes up more. But when I say you're buying a game just to own it, I am not talking about buying it to flip it or return it. Because I think... You know, if we're all kind of similar, there are games we buy kind of hoping to flip. Like, you know, well, I might play it, but if I don't, you know, I'll just resell it. People do that with Kickstarters a lot. More often than you think, there is people who professionally, they have the money to buy into these huge Kickstarters. And a year later, they put them up and they double their money, which... Let's just say you have the money. Now, when I keep saying have the money, you understand what I mean. You have the money. And say every year you spend five grand on Kickstarters, right? And a year later, let's not say all of them. Say you do 10 Kickstarters. But say a year later, five of them are ready and you flip them and double your money. Well, you got your five grand back on five of your Kickstarters, the other five now. That's, po that's profit. You already got your other five grand back. So at some point, you're not even investing your own money no more. You're investing your profits, just rolling them over. You None of your original money is at, in play no more. So there are people who do that, right? I'm not one of them. I can't afford to do that. And, you know, for one or two games, I, I think it's too much hassle and too speculative. If you're going to buy just 10, 12 games a year and do that, and you know you're not going to open them, you're not going to play them, you're going to go all in, and you're going to... Some of them literally sell the pledge. They don't even have the stuff sent to them. They sell the pledge, put the other person's name and delivery information in there, and they have their money and they're gone. But that's not what we're talking about. Now, the other thing I was telling you is, you know, what type of games do you buy just to own them so i gave you my list of gangbusters dawn patrol boot hill uh, there's a game called star trek adventures there's a game called lord of the rings adventure game and those to me i would say are all games that i'm either looking to buy or i have bought pretty much just to own them right now a game like gangbusters I would love to play that if I could find a good GM to play a game for us, to run the game. Boot Hill, I would love to play that if I could find it. Because I'm not GM in these. I'm telling you that right now. I, I want to play. Right? Boot Hill, another one I would love to play. Dawn Patrol, I don't really I don't really know if I do Dawn Patrol. I'd rather do Wings of War or something or Wings of Glory, whatever it was called. Uh, but I just Dawn Patrol is just so classic to me as a game. And... Uh, some of the other ones. But I just, I don't know, that was just something that was on my mind, guys. You know, the concept of buying games just to own them. Uh, and maybe I just want you guys to tell me, oh, yeah, we do that too. Then that way I don't feel guilty about buying stuff just to own it. 
But I think that's going to be our Sunday chat, everybody. Like I said, I hope you guys are having a good weekend. I hope you're in a good mood. I hope you're staying out of trouble. Like I said, I hope you guys take care of each other, take care of yourself. And if not, you know, if life is getting a little heavy for you, just take a little time to pray. It can't hurt. All right, guys, see you later. And God bless. Mm-hmm.